Hi, this is Jay from Encodium. We're going to focus this video on storing files within variables. I guess my first comment would be, if you can avoid doing this, then do it, because it's fraught with complexity. Um, but if you need to do it, this video should hopefully give you the guidance that you need to be able to um, store those files in a variable. So the first things we'll do is we'll, we'll go and retrieve a file. So let's, we'll use OneDrive as an example, because that's just nice and straightforward. So let me just pick a file off my OneDrive and let's just go into support and that will do, we'll have result.docx. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to initialize a variable and I'm going to store, uh, this is a string, so it needs to be a string variable, and I call it a file uh, and the value I'm going to pop in it is the file content and the last thing I'm going to do is to create file. Right, so create file and we're just simply going to create a file from the variable that we've passed in so nothing nothing complicated so let's just pop that back into where I got it from support and file name will just be um, variable.docx and let's pass the file in so he, you'd assume this would work uh, but let's run it and we'll see what happens And here we go. I'm going to need it to run manually for the first time. And click done. And let's see what's happened there. Right, okay, so that's all run through fine. And let's just jump over and have a look at this file. So here's our file, variable.docx. Oh, yep, yeah. and I'll double click it. And the file is correct. So, What's happened? <laughs> what we need to do is have a quick look at the run history to sort of just, just check what's gone on here. So we've got the file from OneDrive and you can see that is a structured file content, MIME type plus the actual base64 string, which is the, the binary file encoded in base64. So that string is the file. And you can see what's gone into the variable is binary data. So thus when that gets passed in to create file, it's passed in binary data. That's actually expecting something very different. It's expecting a base64 uh, string of the file or a structured file content such as this and that is why it's broken. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that when we're writing this data into the variable that it's stored correctly. So, and that's really, really simple. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a variable in here, sorry, an expression called base64. So let's just have a look at that. Now what this does, base64, it tells Flow to write just the base64 string value from the, the file content property. So let me just do that. And then let's run this again. We'll have another problem. <laughs> but let's do it, let's just run it automatically. And that's running through. So that's run successfully. Now this time you'll see, and this is an important step to note, that this time what's been written into the into the variable is just the base64 value from the file content. So there we go, UES, brilliant. And if you look at create file, it's passed in just that data, right? So let's check the file. And it's still corrupt. Now you're thinking, why is that corrupt? Because we've just passed the base64 string. Well. This is not obvious, but what's, I'll explain what's happening here. The first two parts are working correctly. So we're writing the base64 value from git file content, so this element here, into a string variable, and that's been written correctly. Now what's happening, and this is the bit that you cannot see within Power Automate's UI. When you pass a string variable to a, a create file, sorry, not, not necessarily create file, actually, but any action that's expecting a file, i.e. a file content, you'll see that that goes, well, that, that's correct, UES, UES, that should be fine. It's not, because what's happening behind the scenes is, because this is stored in a string power, and it's going to a file property, Power Automate assumes that this string value needs to be base64 encoded before it's sent. So although it's not being base64 encoded here, behind the scenes, that's exactly what is happening. So in essence, it's been silently re-encoded, thus corrupting the file. 
that's a problem. And how do we stop that? Really simple. Again, it's another expression. So what we're going to do here, we're going to use base64 to binary to say, this is a file, please do not re-encode it. Here we go. I just need to pick up that file this time. So the file variable goes in here. So now we've got this configuration here. So we're telling, we, in terms of the variable, we're just storing the, storing the string value. And then when we pass just the base64 string value to the correct file, we're saying, look, this is binary. Do not try and change it. And you'll see what happens this time. So let's test it. And that's worked fine. So let's have a quick look at what data being flowed. Again, we've got a structured file content. You'll notice this. We've got the just the base64 string going into the variable, which is great. That's what we want. And finally, we've got create file. And this time, you'll notice it's put it back into a structured file content. It, and it's put a generic MIME type in, and it'll just pick up the file. Um, in fact, the MIME type of the file type from the file name in terms of which you saved it. So let's check the file. We'll click on variable.decx and this time that file opens up with no problems at all. Right, so there is some other variations we need to consider here, but let's just quickly review what we're doing. The principles here are if you're storing a file in a variable, only ever store the base64 string. And when you rehydrate that, you need to make sure that um, you're using the base64 to binary to make sure that that string doesn't get re-encoded. Right, so let's change this git file content, okay? And now I'm going to put in add an action and I'm going to do encodium and I'm going to search for convert, sorry, convert HTML to PDF because it's a nice quick way of regenerating a document. And I'll just put some data in here. Hello world. And we're going to do the same principle again. The only thing we just need to be mindful there is that I've put docx. So let's just change that to PDF, and that should be fine. So let's just let's just go from the top again. We'll pop that file into here, and in terms of base64, we'll pop this string value in here, and pop the file content in. So now we've changed it slightly. So we've got coding action is going to create a file. We're passing that into a variable, a string variable again, and then we're going to try and create that in OneDrive. So let's just test this. We'll need to do it manually this time because we've added a new connector. If we use the old automatic um, exit data, we'll get an error uh, because we've added a new connector. So when you just generally when you're adding new connectors to your to your configuration, your flows, just make sure that you test with new data. So that data has been converted. That's great. And you'll see, and this is a real important note to step, uh, uh, take note of here, Encodium, uh, as many other uh, actions uh, and connectors, only pass base64 strings, okay? So this is a really important distinction. It's not passing a structured file content with a MIME type, it's just the base64 string of the file, okay? And you'll notice if we look at variable, that, oh, that does not look right, okay? So Power Automate's again done some uh, sort of interpretation of that data and it's turned it into that. So it's kind of like passed the binary file in as a string. That's not right. And then if we look at create file, uh, well, that clearly isn't going to work. So let's just, just test it to make sure. Variable.pdf and uh, you probably can't see that, but let me just drag that into the window. Let's just close that down. We'll do it again. Variable.pdf and it's correct. Okay. So we need to do something with that. So how do we fix it? Right, the first step, we need to obviously get data in the right format here. Now before what we did is we used the base64 expression, but we absolutely cannot use that here because, well, let's, let's demo it and you'll see what happens. Base64, uh, sorry, expression builder. Let's go to base64. And we'll click dynamic data and you'll, you'll instantly see the problem. Oh, well, not instantly, it's not obvious, but we'll see it in the run history. So let's just do this again, base64, okay. And we'll test it again. What's going to happen here? Because we've used the base64 expression, um, previously the base64 expression was used because we're taking the base64 string out the structured file content that has the base64 string and the MIME type within it. Whereas now we're not doing that. We're actually, um, let's have a look down here. You'll see this value, and this is really important. 
we're, we've basically said encoding's sorry encoding's only returning a base 64 string not the the full base base 64 string let's just see if we can pick this up from run history so i can show what this means if uh, power automate speeds up a little bit so let's have a look at one we did a few moments ago you'll see in this file, file content you see this this is different so we can use the base 64 string expression here because that says only go and get this file uh, sorry this data Whereas in the encoding action or any other actions that are returning just the base 64 string, it's different. It's only returning that value. So by putting a base 64 string expression around it, what we're actually saying is take this value and re-encode it as base 64. So note, JVBER, which is the start of a PDF base 64 when it's been serialized, if you look at the data that's gone in, you'll see that it's changed. That is now corrupt. You've corrupted the file because we've re-encoded the base64 string, so it gets to create a file. Yes, it's created a file, but that again will be corrupt because we've just re-encoded the base64 string. So how do we stop doing that? Very simple. What we need to do is we need to tell Power Automate, this is a string, do not change it. So to do that, we use the string expression. And let's go here. And we'll just pop that file content in. Okay, and as before, this is going to assure now that the data going into that variable, again, is just the base64 string, and that's what we want in there. So let's just run that again. Test. And that will come through. Here we go. And you'll see, there we go, that value is now exactly the same as this value. Perfect, that's what we want. Now, let's look at great file, and you will see, oh, brilliant. So this should all be working. Well, it, we're going to have exactly the same problem as we had before. So if you think about it, when we're using the git file content for OneDrive, we use the, um, <clears throat> the base64 string to ensure that we've got the base64 string in the variable. For the encoding action because it already only returns the base64 string we've used the string variable but we're still just passing in this example the base64 string through um, as a beta so what's going to happen that's going to get re-encoded bear with me a moment i'll pick that up for us uh, let's just go to support here we go there's our variable.pdf and it's still corrupt it's the exact same problem as before and that is we haven't used the base64 to binary expression to say this is a string it's a file don't do anything with it and pass it properly so let's just do base64 to binary which says turn my string into a file when you pass it to the action and we'll put file in okay test let's do that again and this will, this is going to work this time and we'll just quickly recap the principles of this So we should have success this time once this processes. Uh, okay, yeah, that's all gone through as we'd expected. So let's just click on variable.pdf. And there's our document working, so that's worked this time. So let's have a quick chat um, about what's happened there. As, as a quick uh, point, actually, if you're wondering why that's taking seven seconds and six seconds, it's just because by default in the advanced options there is a, a default wait time of five, five, five seconds. If you want it to be quick, you can just take that five seconds off and that will run in almost instantaneously. Uh, we do that just because sometimes um, a lot of customers have uh, JavaScript and CSS or pulling external resources and that just assures that, that that works okay. But if you need to speed it up, you can take that five seconds off. So anyway, let's get back to these principles. The first principle when you're working with a variable is that you need to make sure whatever data you store in the string variable of the file, it is always and only ever just the base64 string. So for you'll need to check in the run history for your actions before you write that data in what's being returned. If it's just the base64 string, like encoding do, then you need to use the string expression to write ensure that in terms of that data, that's what's written in. And you can verify this just by ensuring that the data from here to here is the same. If you've got a structured file content property, like coming from OneDrive, so let's just have a look at the run history here, then you need to make sure that the data that's being written in here is only this value, yeah? So to extract only that value to write into your variable, you need to wrap the file content in the base64 string to extract only that data. 
So first step is only the base64 string in the variable. That's the first thing. The second thing to consider is when you're writing that value into another file content property, then you need to make sure that you use the base64 to binary expression and pass the variable into that. And that's, that tells Power Automate that this string contains a base64 file and convert it to a binary format when you write it in and that makes sure that it's encoded correctly. So it is a little bit complicated, which is why we say don't, don't do this unless you really, really need to, but you need to consider the flow of data. Um, so just make sure you're checking the inputs and outputs, make sure that you're only writing the base64 string into the variable. When you use it later on, make sure you use the base64 to binary. If you have any questions, uh, you can contact this, uh, our support team via supportencoding.com or of course, please make, make use of the, the Power Automate community as well.